Hello, everyone. Dan Sod with Sod Metal Recycling. This is a special edition of the Sodcast. We have an all-star Columbia and regional crew of charities that I think everyone here is going to want to know more about. Um, when we look to involve ourselves with the charity, um, the things we look for are low overhead, money going directly to people, and a great active volunteer base that drives an organization. And I can tell you, um, each one of the ones we have here, uh, Hands Across the Street, Columbia Food Bank, and Off the Street Susquehanna share all of those. And I can tell you that from our personal experience as a company and, and me as an individual. Um, we, we are honored to be involved with all these three groups and we can vouch for the fact that when you give to these three groups, the money is getting directly to the people. And that's the most important thing about a charity. Um, so what we're gonna do as a company, um, Earth Day is April 22nd. We have to be virtual again this year. But what we've done is we've decided to expand it to a full week of uh, a 10 cent bump for cans for all our customers. And then any profits that we have, which we're estimating to be about 20 cents a pound, is going to go to these three organizations. So we're earmarking that money for these three groups. Um, and we want the community to come out and support them. And we're, our hope is through this Zoom cast, you can all learn a little more about the three groups and understand why they're all working so well together in Colombia. Um, so that's a little bit of an overview of what we're doing and we're hoping everyone comes out and continues to support uh, these guys. So I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna start with the Columbia Food Bank. Um, we've been involved with them since the beginning of Earth Day. We've had bake sales that have um, gone to them. On a personal note, my Eagle Scout project was working with Janet Eddy who ran the Columbia Food Bank and we did a door-to-door -door canvas in Columbia. It was like, sometimes in life, all roads lead to a certain spot and there it was. So that was Janet Eddy. And now the Peters crew, Pastor and Danielle um, are here and they're gonna tell us a little bit about their group and what they do. So go ahead guys. Uh, Dan, just one question. Uh, what year was that that you did your Eagle Scout project? It was probably when I turned 18 because my dad said, you can't quit. And Eagle, like in Boy Scouts, you have you only have till 18. So I got it like a week before. So it was um, 1988. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I have a, a personal long history with your group um, that's that I'm very um, close to. I don't get to say this often, but boy, that was before my time. Right, uh, exactly. <laughs> I love this meeting. Exactly, exactly. And I did have hair if you look back. So <laughs> I have a picture with Janet. So guys, tell us about what you do as, as an organization. Okay, uh, well, I've been uh, in charge of the Columbia Food Bank for about 15 years. Um, since we moved up here uh, from Baltimore and um, we feed people. Um, we, this has been going on um, the food bank for about 30 or 40 years. It started out as a hot lunch program for the people in Columbia uh, by the uh, Episcopal ladies group um, at the church. And then they realized that hot lunch wasn't just enough, that the people in Columbia and surrounding areas needed a little more help than that. Um, and so that's when it became um, the Columbia Food Bank that operates uh, year round, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 9.30 to 11.30. Uh, or as I like to tell people, um, that's 9.30 to 11.30, except when we come in early or we stay late or we come in on a Thursday or Friday or a Saturday or Sunday when food's being dropped off. So yeah, we're pretty much there whenever people need us. 
Um, and um, what year? Generally, uh, currently, we give out uh, once a month for people. They get enough food for 23 meals. Wow. Based on their family size. Okay. Um, COVID has cut back a little bit of the screening that we have done in the past. Um, but um, we know most of the people that come, so we really kind of know their history. Mm -hmm. um, but they can come once a month and they get enough food for 23 meals based on their family size. So if, it, so if it's just one person, they get a certain enough food for 23 meals for that person. If it's a family of five, they'll, add, get enough, they'll get a food for 23 meals for all five people. So, And uh, what we specialize in is shelf-stable food mm -hmm. um, that you would find in your pantries, that we have uh, food for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, we're fortunate enough to be able, through monetary donations, to purchase uh, meat, butter, eggs. Okay. Um, on holidays, we feel everybody's entitled to a holiday. Everybody should be able that when you think about a holiday pre-COVID, you thought about sitting down with your family and sharing a meal. That's what it's about. That's where you connect. And so at Easter and at Thanksgiving, in addition to the clients getting their regular supplies, we also supply them with a full, uh, all the ingredients for a full meal that you, a holiday meal. Uh, Thanksgiving, it's turkeys and all the fixins. And Easter, we just did hams and everything that went along with that, even as far as marshmallow peeps. Uh, we try to give people everything that they need. Um, but every now and again, you just want a cookie or a piece of candy. Right. Um, so we supply snack bags too. Um, and, and our clients and the strangers that become our friends that come to our door, um, nobody leaves without food. Mm -hmm. We've never, we've always been blessed enough. We've never had to turn anybody away. That's, Even that's, that's our, beautiful. Our, our close areas that we take care of. Um, we will help them. And then we will refer them to a food bank or pantry that's closer to them for their convenience. Uh, another thing is that we try to provide a balanced diet. It's not all one thing or the other. We do try to provide a, a kind of a balanced diet. Um, we have a company in Mountville that's been very helpful with the snacks. During COVID, they don't they, they fill snack machines in companies, which they've not had to do. So we've been able to give, goodies. we've been able to give right. people goodies that we haven't in the past. So that's helpful. But we take anything that comes in, we can always find a use for it. There's always somebody that has a need that we can supply something. We were even giving out masks during COVID mm -hmm. uh, because the Hershey company uh, closed one section of their company and then they opened up another one and they made masks and they distributed them to nonprofits. And we had boxes of them. And that was really a blessing in the very beginning when you couldn't get the PPE supplies. Absolutely. Um, so again, we, you know, we, we try also, to help. We also have a health person that comes once a month. United Healthcare. United Healthcare comes flowers. and works with people who don't have health care. Um, we do refer people to unemployment by giving them the information um, so that they can apply for that or food stamps if they need, if they haven't gotten them. Uh, so we do provide more than just the food itself. We, we try to provide some other additional information that can help them in whatever need they have. What we found out is working in conjunction with all the wonderful agencies that are in Columbia, um, one thing you gotta do, you gotta eat. If your belly's empty, you can't really focus on much else. Mm -hmm. So people come to us and by talking with them and when we get their um, food needs taken care of, that's when we start the referral process, like Dan was saying, that there are so many good agencies in town. 
uh, like Hands Across the Street and uh, just all oh, the Pregnancy Center. Um, there are so many good agencies out there uh, that are available to help people. And can the more I, I mention, I, I, about, then the more the people are going to benefit. I, one thing I noticed on your website, and, and I appreciate how you're really wrapping this all up and in showing that it's more, you have the need and then you do more, obviously. And it's and more than just two, one agency. Oh my goodness. And, and having two pastors here also helps because obviously that's another need um, that's huge, especially now, mental health, spirituality. One thing I saw on your website that, that struck me, I guess it shouldn't be surprising, 30% of your clients are age zero, meaning probably pregnant. Uh, to 17. Um, that, that should touch everyone, especially because those are people who are not that anything's anyone's fault, but they're born into that. Can you speak to some of those like situations that you see? I mean, that's, that's 30, that's a third. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it has changed over the years. When I, we first came, it was mainly uh, senior citizens, a lot of residents of St. Peter Apartments, we still have um, those people, but we've noticed the expansion into younger, um, a lot of single mothers. Um, and so we do try to not only feed them, but we do try to get them additional help, like through the pregnancy center if they're pregnant, getting diapers and, and things like that. So we try to address the needs individually of the, of the people who come. Um, yeah. And and it the community has been very supportive. You know, some of the older people we've we've connected them with Meals on Wheels. They didn't know that St. John's had Meals on Wheels, so we connect them with that. Um, you know, the if they're homeless or you know struggling, we connect them with Hands or the Homes of Hope, and and so we're we just try to make sure that we're just not giving them a, a couple of bags of food and sending them on their way. But we really try to find out what else, because if you're if you don't have enough food, there's probably other things you don't have enough of: health care, child care, things like that. So we do try to refer them to other agencies, both in Columbia and if they live in outside of Columbia, because we serve Mountville, Columbia, West Hemfield, and Manor Townships. We try to refer them to other agencies closer to them if they if if it's possible. Excellent. Or even Lancaster, if it's possible. Sometimes and, what we found is and, the hunger. The hunger is not just of the body; it's of the soul. Sure. And you've got to find out where that hunger is before you can feed it. Absolutely. And and you, the segue of the transitioning, I'm going to go right to hands across the street because that's just what you talked about: understanding the needs and trying to fill them. So, um, Lynn and Pastor Powers. Why don't you guys take over? I, I have to say personally, the first we've been involved. Just my my dad helps with the winter shelter, which is amazing. For the first time, I was involved in the the food handout. I couldn't believe that operation last month, which you do every month. Just very impressive and and community outreach. You guys, why don't you just take over and and we'll all connect at the end. Sure, Lynn, who's first? Go ahead, Pastor Dave. You know the whole oh, history. Oh, I love of that. Day. So look, look at, at this, they're bouncing back and forth. Yeah, yeah so uh, um, I came to Columbia in 2004 and uh, I met Father Patrick at that time. We've known each other for a long, long time being neighbors. Um, there were some outreaches that the church was doing when I came to town then. One, one was a clothing bank. So we had a clothing bank that was started back in 2002 that was already here when I came. We've expanded that and have been, that's our oldest ministry at Hands Across the Street is in the area of clothing. The clothing bank is open Mondays in the morning and Tuesdays in the evening. And we give out new underwear and socks, things we have to purchase with our own resources. And, uh, and then we give away gently used clothing in the clothing bank. The other area that we work in, you've seen uh, the hunger side of it already with the, the food trucks that happen monthly on Saturday. We're actually in a, in a time of uh, renewal. We're going back to the drawing board. We're cooking up something new to do with the food truck distribution. So um, that has been happening once a month on the second Saturday of the month. But right now, 
that's going to, we're going to reinvent that a little bit because we see another opportunity to, uh, and we'll be, we'll be talking about that soon. The, the other area I wanted to talk about was something that we start, two things that we started in the year 2006. One was providing community meals. And up until the time of the, of the COVID pandemic, we had been doing four community meals a month. And COVID kind of changed all that because of congregate settings and you can't have people in the same room and all that kind of thing. So um, we, we opened a soup kitchen uh, last year and we, we started feeding people a hot lunch like Danielle was talking about they did, that they did years ago at uh, St. Paul. We've been doing the hot meals from 12 to 1 uh, every Monday through Friday. That's something that happens. We've reopened the 4th Street Cafe Coffee House, which is a live music venue with a community meal attached to it. We've reopened that at 50% capacity after a, a shutdown. So we've been doing that for a while as well. And probably the area of the biggest need and the heaviest impact that I think Hands Across the Street really has. Well, there's two areas. One is the summer food service program that, we, that we've been serving kids meals while they're on summer recess since 2012. We've been the, the local sponsor of that program with the Department of Education. During the uh, COVID pandemic, we've been giving away food boxed meals uh, that people can prepare at home if they sign up for their families with kids. And since March of last year, we've done over 193,000 meals just to children. Yes. And uh, that, that's one thing. Another area that I wanted to touch on for Hands Across the Street is our homeless ministry. It's, it's, the, biggest, uh, it's the biggest need that we have, and it probably has the deepest impact. And it's also kind of under the radar a bit, Dan. Um, we currently uh, have a building at 291 South 4th Street, the former Vision Columbia, that is the Columbia shelter. It did used to be a winter shelter. Right. Yeah. Um, Father Patrick remembers because he was part of the ministerium when we started the whole homeless question. And in about 2006, I think it was that winter of 05, 06, we started a, a rotating shelter. Around about 2010, Hands Across the Street became uh, responsible for all of basically the homeless sheltering and that homeless ministry. And we went year round with the shelter in 2018. So we really don't close except if we have to clean the building and get everybody ready. And we find that we have more homeless people in the summer than we do in the winter. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, that's probably the, the heaviest impact that we have in the community is working with the homeless. We have a resource center that we renamed the Restart Day Center. It's a place where people can go in the daytime get connected to resources. We now have uh, the local uh, PA career link person uh, ensconced down there in an office of her own, trying to connect people and get them out of that cycle of homelessness. That also includes meals and feeding and providing for their, uh, uh, for their food needs as well. So there's a lot of different areas that, that we're in uh, at Hands Across the Street. And we actually were formed in 2009 to support the outreach ministries of Columbia Presbyterian, which is what we do today. And, so here we are, umpteen years later, still doing what we do and always looking for ways to expand. We just started doing a, a program called Adopt-A-Block where we basically just drag wagons through town and pick up trash and pray with people when we meet them. We do that every Thursday. We just started a, another outreach of that monthly on a Saturday where we can just meet people, talk to them. When we see trash, we pick it up. We make the neighborhood look better. We just provide a little love to people. So we're in a lot of different areas, but it's all about finding a need and filling the need that is not being met in, in uh, all areas and then finding a hurt and trying to heal that as well. Absolutely. And, and the, the, the common thing is services with, with the ministry, with the spirituality. And I heard that from both of both, both of you guys, um, both groups. And that's, that's really what the common bond is. I don't think people realize how much we have in our town compared to, to, to bigger cities, the base of support is amazing here. Lynn, what, what's your um, thoughts on everything? Do you give you anything? Do you leave you anything to talk about? Not too much because he, he's covered most of it, but I'll, I will tell you, I have a, a real love for, for Columbia. I didn't grow up there, but I started serving as a volunteer at Hands Across the Street about three years ago. And um, I just fell in love with serving the Columbia community. And from there, um, I actually took a, a staff position, but I just, the, the people there, the, the need there, and, but just to be able to love on them and to be able to 
serve and especially at least for me to serve with the love of Jesus and to be able to just love on our community and help in the different areas that there is a need mm -hmm. uh, is just what's really important to us at hands and all of us I know and uh, why, why don't you talk about because what struck me from from your just from the food truck is I see a lot of your ministries you're touching a lot of different demographics yeah um, the food truck I think people might have even now a misconception of who gets food I knew I, I personally knew a lot of people lined yeah. up and there are a lot of people that just you would not you would not typecast in mm -hmm. that way. And that's yeah. pre-COVID and post-COVID, I'm sure. And I know the Peters have found that too. But why don't, why don't you talk about that? Because it might help people understand the widespread nature. I think there really is. I mean, we see everyone from the single moms who are in need to the elderly who are in need and really everyone in between. And there are people that they would say, oh, well, those people shouldn't be in line because they have this certain vehicle or, right. but you mm -hmm. know what, everyone has a need and we don't know their story. And what we're there is just to serve. It, we don't ask questions. We don't ask how much money you make. We're just going to help you with whatever you need help with and, and bless you. And just, you know, hope that and pray that what we did is helps you better your life. And that's what we're there for. That's beautiful. So that's, I, that's and we love it. And the, the food truck has just gotten, um, my husband and I have been leading that for close to a year now. Um, and we just, we love it. And just to the people, you get to know them as they come through and you're like, Hey, how are you doing? And there's some people who honestly are coming in there for other people who can't drive, who can't get there. I mean, we have some people coming to pick up for five families. Mm -hmm. So they come and then they go help their neighbors because their neighbors aren't able to come and get in line. And so there is a lot of love in our community for others who need help. And they come and help for their neighbor who can't make it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You guys, like I said, very um, happy to be, we're happy to be involved with all of you. Um, Diane, I, is that Dabo or Swinney who's causing all kinds of problems on that couch? So the Dabo and Swinney are my daughter's great Danes. Oh. She stole the names from me. Uh, George and Dexter are my two French bulldogs. I just put them away or this would be chaos. Well, I already saw someone causing chaos and I don't know who we should blame. I have my handy water bottle, which has been keeping them at bay. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I, okay, so off the street Susquehanna is sort of a newer operation, but part of a bigger group. Yes. I can say um, Deacon Oles at St. John Newman kind of founded the group in Connecticut. Wonderful man. My brother Tim served with him when he was in the seminary before he became a priest. So we had a lot of exposure at St. John Newman and the, the Lancaster group does an amazing job. And you guys have just picked up where they left off and expanded beautifully. Why don't you give people a huge overview because your group might be the least known in Columbia, but yes. it's making an impact. So why don't you explain a little bit about what you guys do? So what we do, um, you don't see a lot of advertising with us because we almost have to kind of sit back a little because I can't be contacted directly by our clients mm -hmm. because our clients have to be vetted. So, you know, when people are recovering from being homeless, and again, I liked what you touched on earlier about the demographics and what you expect and don't expect from someone that's impoverished. Um, you know, a lot of people have jobs and they're homeless. You know, when you look at the cost, um, Lancaster County is one of the highest in the nation for the lack of affordable housing. We are California, New York, and Lancaster, which is just kind of shocking that affordable housing is an issue here. So, you know, I've met a lot of people that have had jobs, you know, and they're making, you know, $30,000 a year or 35 trying to support a family. You can't find an apartment. And then now you've got to go through credit checks and everything else to try to get a place. It's just not easy for people. And then once they become homeless, just trying to dig out of that pit. So the people that we help, I'm contacted by groups like um, Hands Across the Street, um, different groups, uh, Columbia Life Network. Children in Youth, Lancaster General Hospital, their social workers, 
you know, it, uh, different agencies like Tabor. So those groups vet our clients and they say, hey, from this day forward, they can pay their rent, but they're really just having a hard time getting that security deposit the first month and sometimes the last month rent as well that's expected when you rent a place. So we provide the first month's rent. We do have a cap on that. And, and sometimes we go on a base, you know, kind of because it changes so much. It, you used to be able to get an apartment for $650 a month and you can't anymore. So, um, and the other thing is these people have been homeless. So they don't have, they don't have a couch to sit on. They don't have a chair. They don't have dishes to eat off of. So we take, you know, donations of furniture, dishes, glasses. We have a great group of people that work on our warehouse and keep it great and organized. Your mom is one of them, Karen and, um, and Lonnie Saad. They are awesome at that. And um, so they go in and, you know, organize our warehouse for us. We have some great guys who bring their own vehicles and do the moves. We load furniture and, um, and you know, do moves and move people in completely. The one thing now, 100% of our money goes towards, you know, if you donate money to us, it goes towards paying that, you know, that security deposit. So what we started doing was asking people, you know, if you had, if you felt the need, because we don't want to give used mattresses, you know, we would take $100 donations and we work with a company in town that sells mattress. Mike Sod is a, a great uh, wrangler. <laughs> oh, well, say no more. Yeah, he, Mike is something else. I love, Uncle Mike is awesome at that. He is. He got us deals where we get mattresses for $100 and they're nice mattresses. And uh, so we're able to give people brand new clean mattresses, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So those are just some of the things that we do, um, you know, and, and Karen has gone to a move and bought a crucifix that a, you know, that a client has asked for and hung it up for them and, you know, hung curtains up for people. And it's just, it really is, you know, when you go in and you, you know, give to those families and see those kids have their bedroom again and, you know, have bedding and, you know, just all those things that it just kind of brings it all together for you. But I, I love Columbia. I'm not from the area. I'm originally from South Carolina. <clears throat> And I, I started working ambulance in Columbia over 20 years ago and um, I just fell in love with that town. And I, I don't even live in Columbia, but I just fell in love with Columbia. I go to church in Columbia. I've never seen so much heart. I've never seen so many people bond together when something is needed. And I'm, I'm just super impressed with that community. And um, it's, it's definitely where my heart is, even though I don't live there. <laughs> uh, that's, that's beautiful. And, and again, it's just time and time again, it's, it's material need, it's spiritual need, it's, it's a smile, it's a friend. And that's what you see through your groups. And a lot of times when people are donating to causes, all good causes, but it, they don't always have the heart behind it. And you don't always know that the money's going to the people. Um, direct 100%, like almost 100%. You mentioned, uh, Diane, because I know that that's where all your money is. All that stuff, all that stuff is volunteer work to staff the warehousing. Mm -hmm. you, you guys actually furnish places through donations. Yeah. You accept yeah. donations, vet them out, and yeah. you furnish them. I mean, that's, that's really setting someone up. And if I took what each of your groups does as a whole, if, if a person truly took all of them, you could really be on your way to rebound if you took advantage of the collection of the three of you, um, what you guys offer. So that's beautiful. Um, I'd just like to ask some just general questions. You guys all jump in. Um, like hearing all this, if you could say, I, I, and we're gonna have all kinds of information um, at the end so where, where everyone can reach you guys, donate. Um, I'll ask you guys if you could just maybe help me promote it a little bit but I wanna make sure everyone knows where we can give to your three groups. But, but just you know, brainstorming, wish list. If there was something you guys had some more resources or some, something you could do but can't, what would, it, what would it be? Like, I don't know if people ask you that, but what, what, what would you guys love to do if you could? It would take more human resources, mm -hmm. people volunteers because yeah. I think I think all of us understand how deep the need is for volunteers for people to just donate one or two hours of their time 
even in a year, makes a big difference if we can spread that out. Um, yes, money, money is great and, and donated items are great, but people is what we really need to make to make this happen because we're in the people business. That's what we do. Yeah. I agree, David. We, we, we have lots of food donated. We have money to buy some of the things. It's always nice to have more to be able to buy more stuff. But again, volunteers, our volunteers at the food bank are, are all, all but one or two are senior citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have somebody who's there who's 90 something. Um, 94. 94. Um, so yeah, vol volunteers are, are helpful. Mm -hmm. um, COVID has been especially hard on us. Um, we normally have about 20 really active volunteers and that keeps us going. Uh, we have, because of COVID and because of the age of our clients, or not our clients, but our volunteers, when COVID hit, to keep them safe, we had to sideline some of them. Right now, I'm working with a core group of 10 volunteers. We've been together since last March, um, just keeping it going. Um, and when businesses started closing, um, donations started going down because churches were closing, uh, the schools were closing. It was, it was really hard in the beginning. Um, but there, there's got to be a reason that we were, God blessed us to keep on going. We were able to feed the people. We had enough food. Um, and uh, when things looked especially dark, that's when people stepped up even more, which was absolutely mind blowing. Um, but Again, I, I agree to keep these organizations going, um, getting more volunteers in will be helpful. But in our particular situation, I really don't see that happening until the COVID pandemic settles just a bit. Um, so. We've had people calling that wanted to volunteer, but again, because of new terminology, our bubble. Right. Um, we have that core group um, that seems to be keeping things running. And I don't know if it's luck, grace from God. Um, we've been able to do it with the, the small group of volunteers that we have. And as you just said, we just came out of Easter. You said when it was darkest, we had the most hope, which is very interesting. You, you, mm -hmm. you, took, the, you took the passion and went right into Easter Sunday with that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, one, th one thing that would help us, um, Diane, is since I am not fully familiar with your organization, if you could send us some of the things that you're looking for, donations of furniture and things like that, that would be helpful because I can share that with our members. Um, uh, we do get information from hands across the street on a regular basis. So if you could share that with us, uh, that would be helpful because um, there may be people who are willing to um, either volunteer or donate uh, furniture with, uh, as an example. So um, th that would be helpful if you could share that with us. Yeah, and, and I try to tell people when they donate, one of my friends just tried to donate me a, a couch with uh, recliners built in. And I said, how would you like to carry that up three flights of stairs in a small yeah. apartment in Columbia. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you have to be realistic. These people aren't moving into giant homes. They're moving into very small apartments on the third right. floor. Boy, I tell you what, there have been some nightmares. But um, yeah, you talk about the grace of God. Watch Mike Sod load a pickup truck, okay? And you aren't losing anything on the side of the road. But um, but yeah, we need smaller furniture, you know, like light chairs and, and stuff like that. Dining, small dining room tables are always great. Um, it blankets, stuff that's in good condition. I do not like giving people things with stains on them that are ripped. You know, we like to give people things that are clean and in good condition. We check for bed bugs. I mean, that's something people don't think about. We, um, we have bed bug spray that we use. We kind of detox everything when we bring it in. So just things like that, but volunteers, 
you know, it's, it would be nice to find some civic groups where people have to get, or even companies where they make people do, um, or they suggest their staff do, um, you know, volunteer service hours. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that would be incredibly helpful because it it moves. And again, you know, you've got people in their seventies or we had a gentleman who had bad knees and he was helping us. He eventually had to stop helping us. So it's, you know, because you're lifting heavy furniture. Let's you could find actually, all those all those scouts that need eagle badges. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do a quick whip around and be very specific just um, to like a time because a lot of people just, you know, they hear the volunteer, volunteer, oh, I do this. If you can give like specific time windows and what kind of need, like is it is it staffing the shelter? Is it doing the the, the community meal? Is it so if each of you guys could kind of give a just specific, here's the specific volunteer help that would be most useful. And here are the typical times they would be. I would say there's a, at hands across the street, there's a two hour window of opportunity Monday through Friday from 11 to one. And there's also an evening window of opportunity from about 6.30 until say nine o'clock. Okay. That would be, and that would be seven days a week. But if you want to say, Monday, Friday, 11 to 1, 6.30 to 9. Honestly. And it's a light duty, it's a light duty service. There's no, it's no lifting, it's no- uh, No, Lynn's not gonna ask you to move skids. Uh, right. Yeah. No, it's right. helping with our helping with our soup kitchen. It's nice to have yep. other people who can talk to people or, or take the time to be like, hey, can I pray for you? Yep. You know what I mean? During our soup kitchen that, and that is, um, unless we change this 12 to 1. And summer food service program. And then yeah. the evening would be uh, volunteering at the shelter, which is no heavy lifting. It's really just, that's just relational. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, and Diane, the, what about you, Diane? What, what, I know your moves can be all times. I know you try to do them on weekends a lot. No, actually it's Wednesdays. We oh, Wednesdays at around 10 a.m. Yeah, and I hate that because I don't have Wednesdays off anymore. I've tried to get them to switch them to Tuesdays. But yeah, mostly Wednesdays around, because I'm only off on Tuesdays, mostly Wednesdays around 10 a.m. Okay, and, and that process, just so people have an understanding, you're going to a warehouse, you're picking out items, they're already pre-selected probably. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Just loading it on the truck, walking it up into what, and what you said was very important. It's a one or two bedroom apartment upstairs usually, oftentimes. That's mm-hmm. the kind of things you're moving into. So my mom often is like, hey, I can't take that dining room table. I'd love to, but it's just too big. Yeah. So those are, the, those are the needs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, small, like small two-person dining room tables or just like small light tables that are easy to break down, you know, but things that are in good condition. Don't give anyone something, you know, I don't like to think that, you know, you'd give somebody something you wouldn't want in your own home, you yes. know, clean and good condition. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. And and the moves are fun. You want to talk about feeling great when you've accomplished something. I mean, you know, you walk out and you just feel amazing, you know, no matter how much, you know, if it's a hundred degrees outside and you just did a move, you still feel great when you're finished because you just did something that, that really is very heartwarming and, and you should feel blessed to have the ability to be able to do it. Oh, absolutely. And, and my uncle Mike has never met a bungee strap or duct tape. He doesn't like (laughs) That so guy you mentioned how that. those trucks are loaded. I've witnessed that firsthand, and for it just works for him. It, he yeah, I tell him it it's off. the Holy Spirit holding those rockets. You ever oh, see the, the Beverly Hillbillies? Trinity. Yeah, do you ever see the Beverly Hillbillies when the trucks just stacked up? <laughs> oh I tell God. him all the time. It's like the, the, the Beverly. I call him Fred Sanford, but, but well, yeah, it's like the Beverly Hillbillies. Well, there you go. Up. We definitely know the Sanford and Son analogies at our company. <laughs> so. Patrick, uh, Pastor Peters and Danielle, time window that you mentioned Monday to Wednesday, I think. Mon- Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 9.30 to 11.30. There's really two levels, or three levels of volunteers. Once COVID is over, we'll be screening again. So it's it's kind of the one-on-one individual conversations with people. Other is packing the bags of food from sh- shelves that are right there. Uh, but the heaviest part is taking donated food upstairs to, to where to area. the storage area so it can be sorted. and then bringing down food that's the heavier thing we used to have the boys from Mano's house um, yeah. come every week to do that but with COVID they have been restricted so 
um, that's the t that's the heaviest thing. You're carrying boxes or bags of food upstairs, so it can be sorted and and rotated, and then brought it back down. Late. Actually, what we're looking for is a building <laughs> all on one level with I a loading knew, dock. I knew <laughs> the big ass. I knew the big ask would come from Danielle. I was just yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. You go. I'm not asking for much; just a building. Yeah, <laughs> we, we we have the because of the volume. It was easy when there were only eight or nine clients a week. Right. But when you're getting 30, 40, 50 clients a week, the amount of food that goes up down 27 steps mm -hmm. to the second floor has been enormous. So the food bank is looking for a space that's all on one floor to make it easier. But that's the volunteer need now. Uh, obviously food and cash donations are something that we're always looking for, but they're not critical issues at the moment. Excellent. Well, I, you know what? I hope from this tonight, everyone's just learned a little bit about each of your wonderful groups and that they've all understood how how big the need is, but how big the support is in our town. And I hope yeah. everyone yeah. is just proud of how much is coming from this town. It's One thing I should have prepped you. Community. Oh, it's a wonderful community. One thing I'm gonna, we're gonna sign off on. I should have prepped you for this because it's probably gonna be hard for each of you to narrow it down. But if you could each think about without giving names, um, just a, a story or an experience through one of these, through one of the group activities that you've done or one-on-one, -on -one, an experience that really stands out to you as something that stayed with you and showed you the love of Christ in others or, or some experience that, that you would like to share. It, you know, it just, just something that really touched you in, in, in a unique way. Um, Can I go, oh, go ahead. No, you go. Yeah, because my phone's going to die. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't want to blank out on you guys. I'm really sorry, but it was great oh. meeting you guys. But okay. um, we had a woman, and, and again, we have rules. We have these you know, things that we go by. But she was living in a hotel, and she had four children. And she was working, her, she was working hard at a local place and uh, trying to support her four children. And... Um, you know, I went to the group and I met her and I told the guys, I'm like, I, I, my heart goes out to this woman. We couldn't find her place. It was a mess. A landlord had taken the money she saved up for her rent mm -hmm. and wasn't letting her move. It was a nightmare. So we went a little bit and beyond and we have some great people in our group. And let me tell you, there are people that have pulled money out of their own pockets to do things for people. But, uh, I, I just, I said, you know, I went and talked to the hotel. They gave her a break and, and I took her a hot plate because she was spending a lot of money on eating out because she couldn't cook. And she took pictures that night of this meal she made for her kids in the hot plate and how excited her kids were to have a home cooked meal. And um, when she got her place, she just, she reached out to us all the time wanting to help. Um, but just what a great family, what great children, uh, what a hardworking woman, you know, raising her children and just what a great example for her children that she was setting. But mm -hmm. like I said, please don't stereotype people. Don't drive by that homeless person thinking that you know their story because you don't. And, um, and you know, the people that we help, it's just not your stereotypical situation. They're not holding signs. They're not asking for hand. They don't, a lot of people don't ask for anything because they have a lot of pride, mm -hmm. but they have to have it because they have children. I don't know if people know, but at, at one point right before COVID, Columbia School District had over 50 children who were living homeless. Oh, Columbia School District. 50. <laughs> it was over 50. That's amazing. That's, and it's sad. It's incredibly sad. And those children had to go to school every day, but didn't have a home to go to. Hmm. So I, I, I thank God for everything that all of you do. Um, and I thank God for everything that the community does. Because like you said before, you know, you, you get to the bottom of that bank and you start thinking, oh my goodness, we only have $6,000 left. And then all of a sudden you get money, you know? But, um, but I love what we do and, and I love the people that we help. And, and like I said, there's just a lot of heartwarming stories, but that's my favorite. And I always think of her. That's beautiful. Well, we, we had a retired, uh, a veteran 
And I don't think there's anybody that's prouder um, of service than a veteran. And they would run and want to serve rather than take at any time. They'd rather give. And I remember he called and he said, I'm a retired veteran. He said, it has always in my life been God, country, and my family. And his wife had cancer and it had wiped out their savings. And he said, for I've never been to a food bank in my life. But for her, I will do this. And it broke my heart because my father was a veteran. They give so much. And here is this man that felt almost guilty that he had to ask for help from a person that he had served indirectly. I should be thanking him. I should be doing whatever I could to help him. And yet he was ashamed to take. But for his wife, for the love of his wife, he would do it. And you're right. You can't put a label on love. You can't put a label on serving your family and doing what you can to make sure that there's food on their table and a roof over their head. That's and that's what we do. That's beautiful. Drag if you're next. Uh, back in the beginning of COVID, March 17th I, or 13th, we had started making meals and, and delivering them through hands across the street. And then we moved on to delivering uh, food boxes. People could Facebook or call it call in and get them delivered. And I was part of the team that was making boxes. And then we had a team that was delivering. And I'll never forget one of the girls came back and she was teary eyed. And she told me, she's like, I just delivered food to this dear little old man who cried because he didn't know how he was going to take care of him and his wife. If we had not brought that box of food to him. Hmm. And she was crying that we were all crying because I was like this dear older couple who it was just the two of them. They said they didn't have any family. And if, if we wouldn't have brought that food, he didn't know what he was going to do. And just to think that there is a little old couple who had no help from anyone else, but, but by the grace of God, they were able to find out that different, you know, there were people out there that are willing to come out and help them. And that, that just touched me that thankfully we were able to, to help on that day. That's beautiful. That sticks with you. Yeah. It definitely sticks with you. So uh, ser serving is an opportunity. Um, and seeing the gratitude from people, all these stories to me, there's a, you know, the, the, there's gratitude that comes from the heart. And, and that's, that's where we feel it in the heart. Like um, we've learned how to do whatever it takes to try to meet somebody's needs exactly where they are at the moment. Um, the poverty is high. Everybody here knows the poverty rates 20% plus in Columbia and number of kids facing food insecurity, the number of children that are homeless, uh, those kind of things. Today, during adopt a block I had an opportunity to change a tire for somebody. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think we'd be doing running? that. But it, there... it, yeah, yeah, but the tire that I put on, you know, had the steel cord showing through. It was bad, you know, but, but it was enough to get them to where they were going. And sometimes it's just enough to get somebody to that next step, you know, and that's that's what makes it all worthwhile. And that's a common thread that runs through everybody who's here today. So I'm just grateful for that opportunity to serve again. Absolutely. You guys, and like I said, probably narrowing that down is the hardest part for anything you guys, because you have a million of these stories and, and I know it. Just want to just thank you for all the good you do. I hope you guys all just take time to reflect and have gratitude as, as Pastor mentioned, have gratitude that you're able to do it. And then also just be grateful that, that so many people are looking to you. I mean, there's a lot of people who would have 
no ability to survive if if one piece is missing there's if everything's so fragile that if one thread is taken away that can do a lot to them so you each fill a, a role there so we ask um all of our customers to bring cans in donate and and hopefully donate directly to these groups and find ways that you can help um because because we we've, we've just heard wonderful stories from three groups in Colombia that are doing excellent work. So thank you guys. I don't know what else to say because you guys, we could have gone three hours with examples because you do such great work and it, it, it bleeds through because all of it is genuine and all of it's going directly to others. So we, we can't thank you enough as a community. Well, thank so, you for what you're doing. We want to thank you too, Dan. Oh, love, Sides love. Sides are awesome. No, except Mike's side who can't load a truck. But, oh, <laughs> that guy yeah. can load a truck. He can load a truck. And it gets there. There's one in every family. <laughs> well, if, if Pastor had to change that tire, then it may not get there. That would be one thing. <laughs> That's true. Guys, thanks for everything. Keep up the wonderful work. We appreciate all you do.